In this video, we will continue our discussion of the streptococcal species by talking about viridin's strep. To be clear, viridin's strep is sort of an umbrella term that describes three specific bacterial pathogens. So this video is talking about strep mutans, strep mitis, and strep sanguinis. Recall from our previous flowchart that we talked about gram-positive cocci and then we shifted to the left side where you see that fuzzy orange line talking about catalase-negative gram-positive cocci. And therefore, broadly, we're talking about all of the different streptococcal organisms. Within the streptococcal family, we further subdivided those catalase-negative gram-positive cocci depending on their pattern of hemolysis. The previous video, if you're watching in order, introduced you to streptococcal pneumoniae, which is an alpha hemolytic bacterial pathogen that's optotion sensitive. In today's video, we'll talk about the strep viridens family, which follows the same exact flowchart, but is actually optotion resistant. Now remember my mnemonic from the previous video, the O in strep pneumoniae tells you that it's sensitive to optotion since optotion begins with O. The R in viridens strep tells you that it's optotion resistant. So bottom line here and first major high yield point of this video is that when you differentiate strep pneumoniae from strep viridens, optotion is how you make that distinction if the test writer doesn't give you any other information. So with that said, let's get started with viridens streptococci. Now the defining characteristics, as I just mentioned, gram positive, catalase negative, alpha hemolytic, optotion resistant. Remember that R in viridens for resistant, optotion resistant. This bacterial pathogen exhibits chain-like growth patterns. It's also bile insoluble, which differentiates it slightly from strep pneumoniae, since recall from that video that strep pneumoniae is actually bile soluble. This one's bile insoluble. And just like strep pneumoniae, viridin strep is a facultative anaerobe. Now the really high yield thing to know about viridin strep is that it's found in the oropharynx and there's a slight difference between that and strep pneumoniae. Strep pneumoniae was found in the nasopharynx whereas viridin strep is in the oropharynx. And as you'll see, this has really high yield implications for what kind of diseases it can cause, namely its association with dental procedures. So with that said, let's just talk about the virulence factors. This is the highest yield part of today's video, so please pay special attention to this conversation. The first major virulence factor are biofilms. We've seen biofilms before when we talked about our staphylococcal organisms. The biofilm here does the same exact thing. It promotes oral adhesion. So the viridin strep, since they're found in the oropharynx natively, the fact that these have biofilms allow them to adhere to different areas in the oral cavity. So it shouldn't surprise you to learn that the specific viridin strep species of strep mutans and strep mitis cause gingivitis, dental caries, etc. Basically problems with oral dentition. That's the first very high yield point. The second virulence factor are dextrans. Dextrans bind to things called fibrin platelet complexes, and this allows them to aggregate on damaged heart valves. Now, in the discussion of viridin strep, I told you that that was sort of a catchphrase for three different organisms, and you see them written here in blue, mutans, mitis, and sanguinis. Strep sanguinis is really the one that has the virulence factor of the dextrans. Mutans and mitis are the two that have those strong biofilms that promote oral adhesion and therefore cause gingivitis and dental caries and stuff like that. Now, what does this mean for you for the purposes of exams? Well, the test writer is probably going to go after something having to do with a dental procedure because these virulence factors not only promote the initial formation of things like gingivitis and dental caries, but in a dental procedure, you can actually have a complication of subacute bacterial endocarditis due to strep sanguinis. And I wanna explain how that works because this pathophysiology shows up a lot on exams and it's very important to understand. So let's say that you have a cavity. You go to the dentist to have that cavity fixed. And while the dentist is working on your mouth, obviously he or she is using lots of different surgical instruments to drill that cavity, to fill that cavity. So you have manipulation of the oropharynx. 
And during that manipulation of the oropharynx, you can get bacteremia, where bacteria that's normally native in the oropharynx, so viridin strep that normally is hanging out, just a native bacterial pathogen, it can seed the bloodstream. So it goes through some route of entry in the oropharynx, gets into the blood, and now you have viridin strep bacteremia. That bacteria then travels to the heart, and at the heart, if there are damaged heart valves, prosthetic heart valves, or any structural heart defects that expose the heart to pre-existing damage, when that bacteria comes down and passes over it, it can cause subacute bacterial endocarditis. So the first major high yield part of this discussion is that it's the oral manipulation of a normal dental procedure that seeds this viridin strep, and then that viridin strep, once it's in the blood, is more likely to cause subacute bacterial endocarditis in damaged heart valves or heart parts. And I wanna explain that one step further because this is also really important. So I want you to imagine in your head that we zoom in really closely on a heart valve. Normally on a heart valve, the superficial portion is the valvular endothelium. And underneath that, as the name implies, you have the subendothelium. So I have two layers here, one shown in orange, that's your valvular endothelium, and then the one below that, shown in blue, that's your subendothelium. Now, in the case of pre-existing damage to heart valves or prosthetic heart valves or structural heart defects, you can assume that there's a problem with the valvular endothelium. So now I've shown the valvular endothelium and it's damaged. It has holes in it, and basically the subendothelium is now exposed, whereas in a normal functioning heart valve without any pre-existing heart defects, that valvular endothelium would be one smooth, complete layer. So in pre-existing heart damage, you have the valvular endothelium that becomes damaged and therefore the subendothelium gets exposed. And when the subendothelium gets exposed in normal circumstances, those platelet fibrin complexes that we talked about in our conversation about dextrans can bind to the subendothelium. And when platelet fibrin complexes bind to the subendothelium, we refer to those as vegetations. And in this case, they're considered what's known as, quote, sterile vegetations, because in this point in our story, there's no bacteria yet in the picture. So platelet fibrin complexes exist normally in our body, but when the subendothelium gets exposed, they bind to the subendothelium and create these little teeny lumps or little teeny bumps on the subendothelium. Now, the problem arises when you go to the dentist to get that cavity worked on. Now what you see here shown in green is if there's bacteremia as a result of manipulation of the oropharynx so that viridin strep passes through the oropharynx, gets into the blood, and then travels to this damaged valvular endothelium, it can pass through the valvular endothelium, bind to the subendothelium, specifically on those platelet fibrin complexes, and now instead of having sterile vegetations, we have bacterial vegetations because those platelet fibrin complexes, aka the vegetations, are now seeded by the viridin's strep. So to be clear, this is a multi-step process where somebody who has pre-existing heart damage and therefore they have valvular endothelial damage and the exposure of the subendothelium, those people are more likely to have vegetations. And it's when those vegetations get seeded by bacteria in the case of viridin strep due to manipulation of the oropharynx during something like a, a dental procedure or your cavity being filled, that's when you get subacute bacterial endocarditis. So bottom line here is that strep sanguinis having dextrans that promote fibrin platelet aggregates and that bind to fibrin platelet aggregates and that allow those sterile vegetations to seed pre-existing damaged heart valves if there's bacteremia as a result of oral manipulation by like a dentist or an oral surgeon, then this virulence factor can cause subacute bacterial endocarditis. So this is a really, really high yield and complex pathophysiology, but I hope that makes sense to you. The way that you remember this is that the word sanguine means blood and think about blood meaning endocarditis because there's a lot of blood in the heart. That mnemonic is right out of first aid. I think it's really a quality mnemonic. Um, and when it comes to mutans and mitis, I think of mute, like mutans. Somebody who's mute doesn't use their mouth. And when I think about mouth, I think about dental caries and gingivitis. So strep mutans equals mouth equals gingivitis.
So keep this straight. Strep mutans and strep mitis have biofilms that cause dental problems. Strep sanguinis has the dextrans that promote those fibrin platelet vegetations binding to damaged heart valves. And then oral, oral pharynx manipulation during a dental procedure can cause subacute bacterial endocarditis because the strep sanguinis can get through the damaged heart valves. Very, very high yield. I hope that made sense. For treatment, really the important thing to know here is that if there are patients who are going to the dentist to get dental work done and they're at high risk before they go to the dentist of developing endocarditis, then you give them amoxicillin prophylaxis. So these are patients with um, like valve replacements or structural or congenital heart defects. Again, people that have dysfunction pre-existing on the valve, as we talked about back on this slide. So if the valvular endothelium may be damaged before they go to the dentist, the dentist is obviously concerned. They don't want sterile vegetations being seeded by bacteria, so they give them prophylaxis to kill these organisms. So that's really, really high yield. Here's your summary slide. Appearance, these are streptococci in chains, gram-positive, catalase-negative, alpha-hemolytic, optotion-resistant. Remember the R in viridins equals resistant. That's how you differentiate viridins from strep pneumoniae. Virulence factors, long discussion about that, but biofilms for mutans and mitis, dextrans for sanguinis. Remember, sanguine means blood, blood means endocarditis, there's lots of blood in the heart. Remember that it's people with pre existing heart defects that are likely to get subacute bacterial endocarditis, and it's those people that you give amoxicillin prophylaxis to.